Hey folks, Steve here with another Dark Summer video. We'll be looking at Turn 5, uh, which is the second week of July. Uh, and yeah, it would be after we finish up this video, we will be halfway through the game. Um, and I don't think any of the automatic victory conditions will necessarily occur in this game. So I am expecting this to reach the, uh, the full 10 turn uh, recording or, you know, across the whole the whole game. We'll uh, play it every turn, basically. So, um, and sorry, there's always just a little bit of glare right here due to lighting. Don't worry too much about that. Hopefully it won't matter on the long haul of the game. Um, last turn, we saw the fall of Cherbourg uh, for the Allies, which was good. They can begin uh, sending more of their weight uh, against the Germans proper and finding the weak point in the lines to exploit. Um, the British are doing okay by comparison. They're about to shut down uh, some of the sort of German... Um, uh, German things going on, um, but uh, what we need to make sure we do, uh, I, I've got a couple corrections from last video, I forgot to bring in some more of the uh, German reinforcements on their second move, um, it really won't affect the game very much because they wouldn't probably have been able to get up to the front line, so I'll fix that off camera in a minute, but we do need to roll, or not roll, we need to pull the, uh, the next weather chit, Basically, the only thing that really matters here for the Allies is they do not want it to be a Storm Chit, uh, because if it is, they're not going to be able to get rid of their uh, paratroopers, and thus they're going to give the Germans a bunch of victory points. So we're going to pull that, uh, that Chit, and we'll see what we get. Uh, we got a Sun. So, not a Storm. The Allies uh, will be able to... Uh, pull their paratroopers away, which they'll, they'll probably do very quickly here. Um, or I guess I guess it doesn't have to be right away, does it? Um, a sun turn, we're going to get a lot of chits, so I need to think through that. Um, sun definitely is going to slow down the Germans and provide a lot of benefits to the Allies, so they're happy to see it. Um, but uh, yeah, so let me take care of the... Uh, the mistake I made over here with the German reinforcements that didn't come in but should have. And then um, I want to say we'll uh, we'll load up the chits. And I believe we are probably just going to have the Americans do a move action. Um, so they can bring these guys out of the shareboard box. Um, if I look at... Actually, come to think of it. I may actually want to send, I may actually want it to be a British move so we can shut down a reinforcement hex uh, up in the north. So there's, I guess, that we need to look at. So yeah, let me load up the cup. We'll figure it out and uh, we'll come back after the first chit on the allies of play. They always get initiative. They always get to pick the first chit and we'll figure out what, what makes the most sense from there. Okay, so here we are. I fixed the uh, German reinforcements, so they came in to, through the W hexes down on the lower left of the map. I'm not kind of off camera. They moved up to here. That's just kind of as far as they could really reasonably go, um, but in pretty decent position, I think. Um, the British made their move, the first move. They didn't actually have any reinforcements, so they didn't get really much value out of out of going, having the move go first, but the main thing they did was to shut some German reinforcements down, so, um, right here, uh, is that hex we talked about, I think at the end of the last video, um, or maybe earlier, uh, so planning a guy right here basically shuts that down, so no more Germans can come from off map, I can't even remember if we had any Germans come from off map, I think maybe a couple early on, um, so now the pressure is to push the Germans back through here if we can, and we might need to move some of our units to even attempt such things, but to keep applying pressure through here. Now the Germans are going to get reinforcements from an E-hex this turn, and so they'll probably come through here, um, ultimately. So out of all the different E-hexes along the east side of the map, you know, they'll pick here probably and reinforce, uh, to make this hard. 
these British units are pretty beat up, so it's kind of hard for them to operate well uh, at the moment, but, um, you know, they can get some, some replacements, which, come to think of it, I forgot to do replacements too, so... <laughs> I'm forgetful. I'm so forgetful. Well, before we draw the next shit, um, we'll take care of that. Now, this being a a sun turn, uh, the Germans aren't going to get anything. The U.S. will get two mech, one infantry, and the British will get one armor, one infantry, one Canadian. So let me take care of those real quick, and we'll come back. Okay, I did the uh, replenishment. It, what? This is what's interesting. I've totally screwed up my losses as the Americans. I've not taken enough mechanized losses. And that's the easiest thing for the Americans to get. Um, so we have losses that, I mean, ultimately I didn't have a choice. It was all infantry attacking, so infantry was going to take the loss. Where we have wasted mechanized replacements. Um, but the Allies restored an infantry here. Uh, they restored an armor over here with the Canadian uh, armor replacement. And then they also have a mechanized replacement that they couldn't get. But they did... Um, bump up one of these guys way out here with an infantry replacement so um, good that the Germans don't get any replacements this turn but it's like the allies are kind of they're not getting totally configured now what's a shame is like I wish with these mechanized points we could get some new units on right it's it's like it's armor and and you know tracked units that could could be used for something right and to keep in mind we had this eliminated American armor unit you say, oh, that's a two-step unit, Steve. Bring that guy back. Well, I can't. Uh, in this game, eliminated units cannot be replaced. So when he got surrounded, he got a DR star, and he had to retreat to Razak and couldn't actually retreat and was eliminated, he is gone for good. So this armor brigade is gone, um, and I can't bring him back no matter what I do. Um, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> now, right now, the Germans have one reaction shit on a sun turn this turn. Um, I don't see anything obvious for them to use it on. I think they're going to want to hold on to it and wait to see what happens and wait for something catastrophic to occur. So we'll simply go to the cup and we'll see what we get. Um, and we pull a American move of combat. Um, I do think a move is probably prudent here um, because we want to get these guys out of the share board box and everything else. I'll do this off camera because I need to figure out, like, am I going to pull pull out the uh, rangers and paratroopers and gliders right now? Um, if I do, there'll be a hole right here in the line, but I assume I will be able to get enough units down here um, from the Cherbourg box to actually replug the line you know ship these guys down move these guys down I, I don't think that'll be a problem so i think we will probably pull those units off keep the germans from getting victory points and and go from there so um okay uh, i'll be back after the american move okay here we are after the uh, american move you can see um that i forgot to do reinforcements again which is just fine uh, and i don't have them clipped but what we're probably going to do is have them go uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and have them reinforce at Valeroy. And I think that'll be good for them. So, American move, da 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 da. Um, it is just one formation, which is as many as we would have been able to pull out anyway. So, the Americans are getting all of their, uh, their reinforcements pretty well there. Um, I do not think the Germans will do a reaction shit yet, um, because the line is still holding, and in fact, we do have some guys in reserve, um, they don't necessarily need to go anywhere yet, um, it would be nice if we could build up a reserve against the British as well, but I think for the Americans, I, we're okay for the moment. Um, so we can go ahead and pull the next shit, and we got, uh, American action i think for this one we probably do need it to be probably need it to be a combat though i don't know for sure where they're going to be able to do anything so we'll, we'll call it a combat we could even call it a prepared offensive which we probably should um might as well and we'll figure it out from there so let me think through that i think i think what we could look at is an attack here maybe an attack here 
um, maybe some combats in and around here. It's tough figuring out like where can you actually go that will provide any sort of opportunity for a breakthrough right now. A lot of these German defenders are actually quite strong, so it's like what can what can you really do? Um, and the Germans still have the special Bocage defense rule in for this turn and next turn. So um, I'll figure that out. Again, the prepared offensive gives us a shift to the right. Um, and then uh, because it is a sun turn, you know, we have uh, our uh, tactical air, which can help a lot. And we still have the tank destroyers and stuff. So the so the Americans certainly have a lot of tools they can use. Um, they should definitely try their level best to hit somewhere hard enough to make a difference, I guess. That's a real key thing. So, um, all right, we'll be back after the uh, American prepared offensive combat. Okay, here we are after the, uh, the American prepared offensive. I didn't get very far, and, you know, I think this is... Um, a good display of the Bocage because, like, the Bocage gives the Germans two shifts, you know, on, on defense, right? Two shifts to the left for the Allies attacking. The Prepared Offensive gives you one more, but when you're still, like, some of these units are just very strong. You can't get very far, and so you're really doing a lot of attacks, attacks that are, like, one-to-one -one or two-to-one, um, and the Bocage allows you to ignore retreats as the Germans. So like you basically get a lot of no results in some of these cases in some of these combats. Now obviously trying to focus where there is not Bocage is like the thing to do, right? To try to dislodge what's going on here. But um we didn't get very far. We pushed some guys back over here because they were in clear terrain and we, well they were in the city or the town rather here. Um but they got pushed out. And then um, I'm trying to think where else, um, did I try? I, I tried in a couple other places and it didn't, they didn't get very far. We end up using a lot of our asset markers and we just did not get it as far as we would have wanted to. And so we just need to look at, you know, how else can we, um, get where we need to be, I guess. Right. Anyway. Anyway. What, what is going to change this situation here? Because the, the, the Americans have to get all the way down here. Off, off camera. They need to get all the way down here. They need to go to the Brittany box. They'll come back up elsewhere. They'll do the whole thing. But the problem is we still need to get down here. Now, will we get there over the next couple of turns? Maybe. What really matters is, you know, will we be able to create a break in the line that would allow us to race down the roads and start taking that action, or at least folding the Germans back this way. And um, I'm not seeing a, a really good way for them to do that right now, other than, you know, they need to continue to concentrate strength and find some place in the line, like here, where if they were able to break this open, they'd be in good shape. And what we really need to do is concentrate power like we're doing here. You know, now we've got three hexes on one. Um, and, and figuring out where can we do that so that, uh, we don't have the mandatory attacks being a problem, denuding our, our combat power. That's really the trick. Um, that hurts us, uh, because we can't concentrate enough firepower in one place. We really need to try to do that. And, I, and I'm sort of waiting for, you know, how, how else will we be able to do that? Now, um, after turn six, the Bocage will not provide... The Germans the ability uh, to to do all the ignoring and, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, or treating DR star even as a BL1. That's I think what it was. We had a BL1 somewhere over here. Um, it was right here actually. Uh, now that I'm looking at it again. I had to step away between clips. So it's been a little bit for me. Um, So, I mean, it, that goes away, but it's still excellent defensive terrain. Like, that doesn't stop. So trying to figure out, like, where where that opportunity exists to break open the line is what's tricky um, for me. Anyway, so that's the end of that action. I don't think the Germans actually need to use a reaction ship. I think they're actually okay. 
and you look across the board, they don't need to change anything drastic. So we'll just simply go with a cut and we'll just let it play out. And we got uh, British combat. So likewise, they could do a prepared combat. I think now is the obvious time to do that. I'm, I'm pretty certain they can. I think the, the requirement is it's just a first combat of a turn. It doesn't matter if you move first. Um, I'm reasonably telling that is the case. Yes, okay. Okay, so yeah, we'll have a British uh, prepared offensive. And so this is kind of good for the Allies, right? They had movement and combat. Um, I think probably worth attacking here. They could entertain the idea of attacking here to here or here to here. Um, and all along here, I mean, I think there's some good spots where, you know, maybe not the SS stacks, but some very specific targeted attacks on certain spaces might be enough to put the Germans off balance for sure. I mean, definitely worthwhile to do the, the prepared offensive. There's no reason not to do it, but I think this is a decent pull because they can try to hit the Germans somewhere that, that will hurt them quite a bit. We hope, I mean, I might even do something like have the, these guys attack here and then these two attack here and really drive a hole there. Um, we still would have liked to come down through here, and that might still be possible, um, but there's there's still a lot of tricky bits to that. Um, so, okay, off camera, I'll take care of the combats. We'll come back to the aftermath. Um, this might be the place where, you know, the Germans end up having to react, but we'll see. Okay, so here we are after the British combat, the prepared offensive, and they fared a bit better, um, probably just because they had uh more well they don't have the, the bocage to worry about though they do have some hills uh, but they were able to knock out a, a number of units through here um kind of opening up the uh path of advance a little bit um and, and in some ways i mean it's not perfect but um there's some really good opportunities uh for the british as a result of this combat and in fact, may be cause for uh, the reaction shit on this next go. And so um, basically pushed some of the Germans back through here. So this whole area has been weakened, um, which does threaten sort of this set of uh, entry hexes, which would force... Um, would force the Germans' hand a little bit to have to come from basically down here instead which limits their ability to you know really get onto the board in a convenient way um there are some you know attacks through here that uh are continuing to kind of weaken the sort of ss defensive line here you can see we got a lot of ss units but now we're starting to get zox pressing between the stacks and those units are getting a little bit worn. Um, and even through here, we actually got a really good result. And now uh, a DE result even, actually. So um, what's really interesting is because this major river line keeps a Zog from being projected in these hexes um, by this set of units, what that means is if the Germans don't do a reaction shit now, what could happen is that the British get a move marker and they go, I'll just use this one unit as an example. Um, let's see, minor rivers, two, so one, two, three, and a half, four and a half, you know, five and a half, and now these guys are out of supply, right? And, and they could do something like, you know, bop, bop, and sort of create this um, problem where uh, we're encircling some of these guys and we're creating a situation where we can start to run down here. Maybe we, you know, plop a guy right there and now all of a sudden, you know, this guy can't get back over the river without coming all the way back down here and through here. So, like, this is a pretty rough situation for the Germans. They probably were hoping the dice didn't go 
the British's way so much. I mean, we've got some stuff over here that's happening too that's pretty gnarly where the, the Germans kind of need to figure out like what can they really do um, to resolve this situation. And, and the reality is they don't have a lot of great options. Um, really not that many great options. They are pressed in the east here. Now, we would like a movement shit, so we could kind of try to figure out a way to fix all of this. But I think the uh, SS units are going to have to separate and sort of realign somewhere uh, and figure out where else to hold the next defensive, defensive line. So just knowing how bad this is, right, um, I think we do have to do a reaction shit. And the reality is there's not many good options. Um, what I'm thinking is try to get something like that, maybe let, leave this guy here. Um, this is probably okay for the moment. Um, try to get into some better terrain, but there's really not many options. You, know, you could try something like that, right? But that's not really going to do it. So um, I, I think all that we're left with was, yeah, to activate this stack, move a unit here. Um, I think I've restored these guys to where they're supposed to be. Um, might need to fix that later, but not a big deal. So with the reaction, we would move like this, and then it's like, do you bother to attack? Maybe... 18 defending would be like one to one yeah i mean i don't think the attack makes sense to do as the germans but i do think you know through here um yeah i think that will work for now that this this keeps these guys from snaking around at least and we still have enough combat factors here that they're okay um so we should be all right i think that that will help our position a little bit as a reaction again not a, not a you know when else would we use that reaction shit we've already let the allies go four times it was now or never really still a lot of stuff left in the cup so we will, we will pull it and see what all we get uh, we got an American mover combat. Um, knowing that we're still going to have another... Uh, we will have another combat. Now might be a good move. Yeah, I think a move makes the most sense here. Um, I don't know that they're going to do any combined action because... There's just not as much to do. I think a lot of what the Americans need to focus on with their movement is bringing these guys up. Um, and in fact, I'm trying to see if they have a really good... No, they don't. They'd love to get into this hex, but they've got to deal with all these things. So movement, I think, is going to be needed, and they can try to figure out a way to maximize their firepower on some important locations. So let me take myself off camera, I'll take care of that, and we'll be right back. Okay, here we are after the American move. They've uh, actually figured out a way. I should have I should have seen this as the Germans, but I missed it. Uh, we could kind of ooze around here and uh, put these this guy out of supply, basically, um, and having him in pretty rough shape. Um, and the Germans can't, like, the only way for these guys to get out is via emergency withdrawal, which they could do, but that does put some pressure on them. I also have additional pressure over here. That could be a problem. Probably will be rectified by these guys, but we're sort of forcing them into that posture, and we're just trying to get situated everywhere else. So this continues to concern me. Um, we need to figure something else out for that. Um, but, you know, all the Americans have the reinforcements on that they can use, so that's really it. Um, so we'll go to the cup. With the reaction shit used, it's now just whatever we draw is what happens. Um, so we draw a British move marker. 
Now, um, here's where we could entertain the idea of a, uh, you know, we could entertain the idea of a combined action um, because most of what we have over here is like we could either treat as a, you know, move one hex and do a combat or we just move. But we're already most of the way where we need to be, I think, for, for combat. So I, I think having this be a combined action is certainly worth trying. Um, and then that leaves us an extra combat round later to do any mop-up duty. And so everyone can move one hex, which uh, I think works to a certain degree, what we want to do. Um, does mean that all the units that are adjacent to enemy units can't really do anything, but that's okay. I mean, I think we're, we're okay with that. Um, the point is we get the extra combat. And so this will be a combat with one shift to the left, um, but I think this will work very well. This will work very well for us, indeed, I think. <laughs> I'd like to think. Um, and the British do have their tactical air that they could use. We still have carpet bombing, but we've not really used that. This might be a good turn to try it because that could um, really disrupt the uh, the German uh, situation somewhere through here. Um, and if I look at, like, if we did do that, if we used carpet bombing, we've not done it at all yet. Um, can only use it twice per game. Cannot be combined with tactical air or naval support. Ignore all in hex terrain effects on combat. And shift one column to the right. That's pretty good. And we could actually use that to do some damage to some of these um, uh, SS units even. And just hit them as hard as we can uh, with some carpet bombing so that they ignore, they ignore the hill terrain. And then we get another shift to the right, which makes up for... Um, the minus one for the combined action, and then it would just be a straight up die roll for these. Uh, I think that's actually super valuable. Um, actually, you know, now that we're not carpet bombing uh, Khan, um, like we they did historically, we, we have a little bit more operational, you know, capability that we could choose to leverage. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, okay, I'll take care of these combats with the left shift, and we'll see if the, the British have actually managed to get anywhere with that. Okay, here we are after uh, the British combat. I mean, we, we got some good hits in. We actually eliminated some more units. So we eliminated some guys here and around here, uh, forcing retreats. The Lair uh, Panzer Division has been heavily, heavily hurt, um, and so... You know, the British have a pretty good opportunity here that they can begin to force an opening um, and, and just really start to cut the German line kind of in half. They're even kind of pushing through here uh, on the outside and just forcing forcing things back. Now, I did try to use carpet bombing on this hex, and I got a no result after all calculation and die rolling, so... It was worth a shot. Um, trying to beat up on these SS units um, coming off the hill would have been nice to just to reduce them, uh, but we failed to do that. But we're off. I, I think that was pretty good. I mean, for just a, a combined action, which allows us to do an extra combat when we draw the next combat shit, I think that's going to be um, part of the, the key because the next combat will be full strength. Um, and uh, really, we're, we're going to see... Um, I think uh, a good a good set of combats here. Um, like here, you know, this unit can't afford to take much more. This unit is in trouble. Um, I think this unit over here is in deep trouble, um, or those couple units that are there are in some deep trouble. So I think either way, you know, the, the Germans have a lot of problems they need to figure out a way to rectify. So we'll go to the cup and we'll see what we get. And we got the British combat, um, which means that the rest of the chits are going to be one American chit and three German chits. So the fact that 
Germans haven't gotten to go at all. Is a, is a challenge for the Germans, period. Now, they'll get a lot of opportunity to do a lot of stuff all by themselves, but um, it just sucks they've not been able to respond properly on this sunny, on this sunny week. Um, and the only thing I can think of, like, mattering here is that, um, boy, uh, they will probably have a decent chance of getting some guys to safety. But what's really, what's really tough about this is, like, you, the Germans want their chits to be spread out so they can react better to what's going on. Having a bunch of turns in a row doesn't really help them very much. Um, and with very little reaction, I mean, there's no special rule like there is in some of the other Dark Series games where you can only have a certain chit, you know, of a side come up. I, to my reading of the rules, there's nothing limiting the Allies from having chit after chit after chit in this one. So the Germans are kind of being affected by a bad sequence of stuff happening, right? So regular uh, British combat, I mean, we just talked about it, is going to happen in a couple of key spots. Let me take care of that off camera and we'll come back. Okay, here we are after the uh, British combat. And boy, howdy, do we have a nice big opening here that is just waiting to be exploited. Um, and it's a pretty gnarly one, too. Uh, like the British could come down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and close off that bridge from the other side, be in the backfield. I mean, this is a significant, significant bit of progress. Um, just the British diligently hammering home uh, on the German line in a way that for some reason the Americans just can't, but I think this has just a lot to do with the more open ground that is still available. Now, there was bocage here, don't get me wrong, but um, I think in a lot of these other spaces, they just have a lot more room to maneuver. This guy got forced back on a retreat. So um, the, the British are definitely making headway in the area that they need to make headway in. Now, we're gonna go to the cup and we'll see what comes up. Probably a German shit. Um, and it is a German shit, so combat or move, I think we gotta do combat. Um, the Germans, do not, oh no, they do. They do have some reinforcements to come in. Uh, they're coming in on the east. Um, I think those are uh, definitely needed reinforcements, um, for sure. Uh, the question is, where are we going to put them? I think if they come in over here, over here, they can reinforce this flank, which is dangerously low on support. Um, and so I think that's definitely going to need to happen. And then everywhere else is going to be all about... Uh, can these guys pull down around and try to defend over here? Um, the, the tough thing is these guys can't... Well, they could... I guess they could cross the river here and then come out around. So these guys can still get away and figure out a better way to defend. Um, but then we have to figure out how to pull these guys over or resituate the line, save this dude. So definitely uh, going to be a busy movement turn for the, uh, for the Germans... They're automatically going to get this last formation, so I don't need to roll for that. Um, but yeah, let's see where we end up. Okay, here we are after the uh, German move here. And you can see we, we've managed to kind of scramble around and we can keep a line going. Um, some areas I'm still keeping, like the SS units are kind of the anchor points of some of the line. Especially where it gets kind of weaker, these guys can kind of come out as they need to to keep covering the line. Uh, the reinforcements sort of came through here so some units could bunch up against these guys we got coverage here we've still got some coverage here though they're getting worn down um i at some point i need to figure out how to keep the british from totally smashing us so it's like how do i you know how do i shorten the line do i shorten the line by pulling back down here and then shuffle units more and more until we can fill in this line. The problem is always going to be this fillet, uh, fillet, 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 uh, um, plane, where basically you know all the all the British really have to do is walk up and fight because there's no defensive terrain other than some rivers, and that can be mitigated. Um, really, I mean the, the British have the capability to just keep pushing through. I'm a little, you know, concerned about that, but 
we'll see what we get in the next chip. We pull the German movement or combat. Um, I, I think we could entertain the idea of some combats, but I just don't know that they're going to get very far. Um, movement might be more useful, but we could, well, and, and to be honest, the sun weather makes this difficult. So, like, we could have, let's see, 22 to 12. Yeah, I guess we do combat, but I really do not think there's anywhere that I want to try it. Like, 9, 16, across the river, that's not really useful. Better on defense. Um, could try to make something happen here, where it would be 9, 13 to 9, and then a shift to be 1 to 2. Like, I don't think that does us any good. Yeah, it's really hard to figure out, like, why would you, where would you attack as the Germans and why? And is it even a value to do any combats? I really don't see a point on a sun turn. So we use combat because I think we still want a movement at the end to, to set ourselves up if we can. So it's between an American and a German shit, mixing them up, and we pull, there it is, the American shit. Now we've had... Two movements, uh, so this has to be a combat. Now we could do a combined action here, though it looks like that wouldn't really advantage us very much. Um, well, that's not true. There's actually some spots where it could be useful. Um, I think what we probably want to do is just have it be standard combat and that'll be good enough i think i could see a point where i could use some some carpet bombing right here and that might help a whole lot so um yeah let me take care of this combat off camera maybe we'll see some movement i know the americans would really like to make some headway here they've got a lot of ground to cover um, and haven't been able to do it yet so we'll see here we are after the american combat uh we did force some losses over here and so can kind of poke our heads out a little bit um, some retreats, uh, which were nice, but then we got an AL-1 here, which wasn't so great. We did use some carpet bombing to make this retreat happen. Um, would have liked a, a better roll, but there it is. I mean, this bocage is just, just rough, man. It is just rough. We're not getting very far, which is very worrying in terms of our timetable. Um, final chip that comes out is the German move. And uh, we'll take care of that quickly. Um, probably won't need to do a whole lot, to be honest, but we'll see. Okay, yeah, only slight movement adjustments. Uh, most of these just to become um, a little more spread out or positioned slightly better. Um, I just, the, the Germans really like this full stack just sitting right here, just threatening to bump the Americans out of the way and having a shot around in their backfield, which would be fun. Um, but just not quite getting there. Um, so, you know, as we look at the attrition phase, I don't see anything really being an issue for attrition at this point. And then um, for the victory phase, if I get this right, let's see. We are at the end of turn five. Uh, I believe we do not have any allied paratrooper gliders or special service units on the map. At this point, I'm pretty sure I checked all the stacks to make sure I moved them all out. So I'm pretty sure that's the case. So the Germans don't get anything for that. They're not getting a victory point for uh, control of Cherbourg. Um, there are fewer than two divisions in the Brittany box. Well, if they can hold there, they'll be able to get four victory points for that. And then it's going to be victory points for regiments and brigades that exit into the eastern exit box. So we do we do have to think about how are we going to get all of these guys pulled back in a way if we can. Of course, that, that gives up some of the Brittany box, you know, stuff if we don't defend down in the south, you know, the west part of the map, I guess, if we actually follow the compass rows. Now, the Americans, um, they can still get or the, the, the allies, rather, um, can still get plenty of victory points. There's a lot of places still to get victory points. There's still places to go, things to see, ways to, to implement victory. 
Um, the Allies or the Americans have lost some units, um, you know, part of divisions, which is going to hurt their ability to get victory points in the long haul. But still, um, they're ahead on victory points for the moment. Um, but as we know, we don't want to totally vacate the map before the end of uh, turn nine. So, yeah, at some point we're just going to have to start to pull back and pull, you know, pull out of of Normandy, right? I mean, that's kind of what delaying the Allies and keeping them from getting into Brittany, for instance, or something like that. Um, may simply mean uh that we get like four like i don't know i think it works out to be eight units worth of victory points maybe if it's four victory points but we would spend at least eight units trying to keep that from happening until the late stages of the game so i think i don't know i don't know I don't know, from a strategic aspect, I don't know what else the Germans can really do right now other than they will have to pick a time to start pulling back and pulling back safely. Um, and there's no really, there's no good way without yielding, um, you know, down here and allowing the Americans to get to the Brittany box. I don't know if there's anything else they can do other than, you know, maybe what... <laughs> What they end up doing is they fight on the map with the forces as is, and if they can hold on long enough to the end of the game, they sneak a couple of units at the very end off map while still holding something of a line, and they eke out, you know, maybe, let's see, one, two, three, four, you know, a handful of victory points and end up coming out ahead of the Allies. That's, I guess that's the one way they could try to do it. So I think there's, uh, there's some needle threading to decide, like, when do you kind of just fall back as the Germans, or do you try to hold as long as possible um, what you can? Um, because it's not just like, this, it's not as if you're deciding, like, oh, we're going to hold this line until the last turn, and then everyone's going to leave. Like, it takes a lot of time, and, and if, like, there's a lot of, I'll call it north-south roads. The east-west roads are, are relatively few, that go directly east. And in fact, if you look at some of these roads, they go kind of up, but then they have to come back down before you have roads east, whereas the road from Granville way on the west that goes up through here allows you to come back down through uh, Flares and Vier. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that awfully. But like this, you know, from here gets you onto an east-west Again, the east-west, generally speaking. I know the compass rose is tilted a little bit. But east-west roads, that can take you to an east exit box, right? I, I can't just decide to do that on turn 9 or 10. I, I really have to think about, like, which units am I going to get off the board? And when can I start pulling back, rotating, pick a hinge, and rotate these guys back? And, and figuring out, do I try to hold a line that goes... I'll try to pull the camera back like here all the way down to the say river here as an anchor point and kind of shift this all down i don't know if that's that might be shortening the line i can't tell probably is shorting shortening the line just i guess based on the geometry of it um to hold on franche and still try to deny the allies access to the Brittany ports that might be the better thing to do and maybe I should have I should have been doing that this turn. I, I really don't know. It's really hard to say. Um, what is better there? Um, I, and, and I guess the last action was a German move, and I didn't move very much. So like I could try to say, oh no, I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to pull back and fix that. But I'm willing to let the game stand here for the end of turn five. It's the halfway mark, and just say this is where we're at. And let next turn be the decider of do we start to pull, where do we start to pull back and how do we do it? Um, I, I think the real trick is going to be keeping this sector alive with all the British pressure that's being applied down here. Uh, that's going to be a real trick. So 
yeah, I think as a as as a closing remark at the halfway point of the game, um, I mean, I think the the if I were to try to look at a map of um, if I try to look at the like a map of the Normandy campaign going into the third week of July, I think we're pretty close to historical, but also maybe a little bit better out here east of you know the, the out here. Like I think we're doing better out here than what's historical right at the third the beginning of the third week of July. Everywhere else, um, you know, we, we took Cherbourg, but this line around here seems about right. Like we're we're about in that area historically, I think, you know, give or take a few hexes um along the line. So it's like, you know, I think we're okay there, but what's uncertain is like, okay, the the weather. We've had Showers, sun, showers, rain, sun. Of the weather left, we have basically two good uh, allied turns. The really good German turn is yet to come, and then we have the showers. Um, Oh no, oh no, and I just realized something, I just realized something, that uh, I have cheated a little bit, and I have let the Germans use road movement. Oh my gosh, I did, I did, I let the Germans do road movement. And this is, this is beyond, um, this is, this is beyond the, uh, oh man. This is beyond just the reinforcements. Um, I have certainly uh, allowed some units to move further, I think, than they really should have been allowed to in a couple different places. Um, one of the most important places that that happened was right here. This unit that swung out around, so he should not have been, he was like here, so he would have been able to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven. And that would be as far as he could really have gone or further down south, but he needed to hold that. Um, and then I think some more of these units over here, it was like they came from like here. So really, they're probably more like here. I probably would not have moved like that then. So because I pulled some of these guys over a little bit. And so it, it's probably something like this, right? I, everywhere else, I didn't move around enough for it to have really mattered a whole lot. But, um, and this is going off memory, so I'm having to like very carefully figure out like what was a legal move at the time that I did it. I think that was really the main big sweeping move that I made. Um, everything else maybe could have gotten there beforehand. But I think that's, that's the really tough thing, like remembering that the Germans can't use road movement when you just see the roads there and you want to use it really bad. So I'm going to hope that I'm going to hope that that was fine. I might penalize myself in the next episode here, the next turn. And on one of these turns, like showers or storm, where the Germans can use road movement, I might apply some penalty to myself. And on like their first or second move chit, they're not allowed to use road movement or something. I don't think it mattered that much. I think it was a pretty lax turn in terms of big movement. It does mean that this over here... Is kind of a problem um, for for the uh, the Germans, but I I think if we if I think through how the movement was performed and when I did that movement, I actually think this unit could have gotten up there um, because he would have had two moves to get up up and over there. So maybe it's not a big deal. I, I maybe I just let it go. Um, I move these guys back. Um, Likewise, they might have gone like up to here, maybe, 
Um, that's pretty close to where they were actually at anyway. So I don't know. There, there's some difficulty here in remembering that. That's on me. But again, I think the game is still hashing out to be um, close to history, you know, barring any other major mistakes I've made. Um, and again, if we look at the weather chits to remain, they are sided for the axis, two showers and a storm. Showers is kind of middling, but the Germans obviously still prefer it. And then they're really good turn, but then we still have two pretty rock solid allied turns via cloud to happen. So um, hard to say exactly how this is going to pan out. I don't know if I should be doing something better as the Americans. I think I'm just playing the table as it's coming up. Um, if we look at the reinforcements, the Allies, you know, the, the British don't get much more. So for as strong as they are, they're going to start to peter out. The Americans still have a lot left to come in. A lot of combat factors. But so do the Germans. The Germans still get a lot. Now, they're not super, they're not all super strong units. But those units can make the difference uh, in the end phase of the game to be exiting stuff off the map. So again, figuring out like how how do we actually make this work? Um, the Americans still have a long way to come down south and then cut around uh, from Brittany and I'm not sure what that's going to look like. But yeah, if you have any thoughts, if you've played the game already and you kind of have a sense of the way the game goes um, and you have a, opinions on where things are at right now, uh, let me know. <laughs> um and if there's any other gotchas I'm missing, let me know too. Um, it's just hard to say how well I'm really doing now, but it's certainly more even. I think this game, I think the Germans are putting up a decent defense this time. Um, and we'll see where it goes. So thanks for watching, guys. Lots of rambling, a lot of talking. I um, really appreciate you watching. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Keep on gaming.